We just can't help ourselves, can we? Because when it comes to the many mysteries of human civilization, of all the hidden messages and strange creations that have populated the hallowed halls of our history, once you start picking at one unsolvable enigma, more and more of them manage to find their way to you, pulling a thread on the tapestry of humanity that twists and turns into many, many more. The mystery of history is eternal, and while some of these particular tales are taller than others, many that have been all but debunked by the greatest of skeptics, you have to admit they're interesting nonetheless. So let's take a look again, shall we? Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the top five mysterious unsolved events in history, part two. All the clip. Just because Da Vinci painted it doesn't make it true. No, but history. She does make it true. For the curious amongst you, of course, that clip was from 2006's The Da Vinci Code, based upon the book of the same name by Dan Brown. That, of course, is the definitive melting pot of so many conspiracy theories and alternate interpretations of history that it was merely a matter of time before we chose a clip to set the scene for this particular Top 5 Scary video. Also, Sir Ian McKellen, everyone. Any cinematic clip with him in it is already a pretty strong starting point, right? Kicking off at number five, Coral Castle. And no, that is not my imitation of Rick Grimes trying to call his son a fortified structure. Sorry, that was a terrible joke. But the actual mystery of Coral Castle is equal parts true engineering enigma and equal parts perhaps the most American thing that you've ever heard of. Along the highways and byways of rural America, there are countless tourist attractions that litter the way, but one of them in particular may actually have a much more intriguing mystery than the rest. Just before 1920, a Latvian man named Edward Leed Scanlon was jilted by his young bride just a day before their wedding, and so dejected and depressed, Edward left his home country to head to America. Here, after becoming a recluse and discovering a strange affinity for magnetism, Edward spent the next 28 years constructing a bizarre megalithic castle from oolite, a limestone sediment similar to coral. Now, although the vast majority of this structure now is ruinous, which operates as a popular tourist attraction on the roadside, the actual structural properties of Coral Castle have baffled people for decades. Given the fact that Lee Scanlon worked completely alone, shifting over a thousand tons of oolite rock into place with no conventional machinery and no other means of hauling such a large amount of minerals and materials. As the legend goes, at one point a few local teenagers claimed to have stumbled upon Lee Scanlon working on the structure late at night, reporting that he had caused the blocks of coral to move like hydrogen balloons, floating perfectly into place without the aid of any tools. Strangely enough, this led to wild rumours that Leeds Scowning was using telekinesis to build the castle, a claim which he refuted. In fact, the only tool that Leeds Scowling ever spoke of using was a machine that he referred to as a perpetual motion holder. Before his death, whenever he was asked how he constructed the place, he simply stated that he understood the laws of weight and leverage well, and on several occasions he stated publicly that he had discovered the secrets of the pyramids, and that once you know how to do it, it's easy. I mean, this one is a little tongue in cheek, but what do you guys think? Another eccentric close with too much time on his hands or a structural genius that had insight into a long forgotten knowledge. Let me know. Coming in at number four, Kaspar Hauser. And who the hell was Kaspar Hauser? A mystery that has completely perplexed historians for nearly two centuries, leading to an insane web of speculation, an entire network of conspiracy that extends its tendrils all the way to the royalty of Napoleon. On the 26th of May 1828, a teenage boy appeared on the streets of Nuremberg, Germany. His name was Kaspar, a boy of 16. He was filthy, could speak only a few words, and had a letter with him addressed to a captain of the Bavarian cavalry. He kept repeating the phrase, I want to be a cavalryman as my father was in old Bavarian, but the city guard dismissed his ramblings and imprisoned him as just another vagabond in Nuremberg Castle. His strange origin drew the attention of the city's mayor, who claimed that despite his stunted appearance, the boy had an excellent memory and was quick to learn. Eventually, after befriending the mayor, Caspar spoke of what he could remember of his life before and explained in great detail at living totally alone in a darkened cell 
well, two meters long, one meter wide. Each morning, Casper said, he would wake to find rye bread and water next to his bed. Periodically, he said the water would taste bitter and after drinking it, he would sleep more heavily than usual, where he'd wake up to find his hair and his nails had been cut. Casper claimed that the first human he had contact with was a mysterious man dressed in a dark hood, his face completely covered. He taught him to write his name and taught him the same phrase he would repeat when he was found. Eventually, this story led the European aristocracy to believe that Casper was an exiled prince, held captive for his entire life to prevent a line of succession. As the year passed, Casper would live and learn in many of the Bavarian noble houses, where allegedly there were many attempts on his life by the same hooded men that he had described in the darkened cell. They got him in the end though, and on the 14th of December 1833, he was mysteriously stabbed and he died three days later. On his grave in Latin, read the words, here lies a mysterious one who was killed in a mysterious manner. Beats me. Next up at number three, the mystery of Oak Island. And whilst many of you will know this particular entry, there's no denying the fact that the eternal mystery that is Oak Island is worth mentioning every single damn time. And its inception is an event that has long evaded the unscrupulous eye of history. You know the story, right? In Nova Scotia, just off the coast of Eastern Canada, lies a small island that has allegedly been the site of our civilization's greatest of treasures. Although no one has ever been able to locate the exact point of where that treasure lies, causing countless individuals to fall into a wild obsession with unearthing its eternal mystery. In fact, the cause of Oak Island's mystery is down to the fact people have found treasure there, many of which have been carbon dated to several hundred years old, and the story of the Money Pit, a mysterious shaft that has been excavated countless times throughout history, which actually exists with actual structural records, has forced dozens of businesses to go bankrupt trying to solve its enigma. So here we are with our mystery. Who the hell built this place? Now, there are hundreds of theories as to who would have constructed such an intricate place to conceal their treasure, the most popular being Captain William Kidd, the pirate that sailed to North America in the late 1600s, burying his plunder there so no one else could find it. Another theory states that the pit was constructed to house none other than Mary Antoinette's jewels, who after the Parisian uprising at the Palace of Versailles, gave her treasures to a lady in waiting, who then fled France and ended up in Nova Scotia, where using her royal connections, contract the French Navy to construct the Oak Island Pit, making sure that the incredibly rare jewels of her queen would never be discovered. And strangely enough, there has actually been credible evidence for this theory recently in 2017, when a 500 year old brooch was discovered containing a huge garnet similar to that of which Mary Antoinette was reported to often wear. I mean, we could talk about all of these theories for an entire video, but as so far as unsolved events in history go, this one remains to be exactly that. Swinging in at number two, the Yonaguni Monument. Okay, where do we even begin with this one? Because if you've seen any of our ancient mystery series, then this one definitely deserves its place amongst their ilk. But the event that we're possibly alluding to in the case of the Yonaguni Monument may be a geological enigma that predates known civilization itself, involving an entire continent submerging deep beneath the ocean. Yeah, and whilst that may sound like a massive leap, let's just take a look at the strange properties of the Yonaguni Monument before we jump to any kind of conclusions. Off the coast of Japan, submerged beneath the southernmost Ryukyu Islands lie a formation of potentially man-made monoliths, which has led to decades of debate as to the true nature of this strange geological formation. The monument itself consists of very fine sandstone and mudstone, with its main feature being a rectangular formation measuring about 90 feet tall, and consisting of several other strange formations that seemingly don't make sense as to how they have been naturally formed. Now, despite this massive debate between the Yonaguni Monument being natural or man made, perhaps the most mind blowing theory comes from the renowned geologist Robert Schock of Boston University, who states that the Yonaguni Monument is indeed most likely a natural formation, possibly used and modified by humans in the past, before seemingly sliding away to the murky depths of the ocean during a geological event that occurred in ancient history. On the flip side, the geologist that discovered the monument, Masaki Kimura, claimed that the structure was undoubtedly artificial, created by an ancient civilization at least 10,000 years ago, accurately carved and created before sliding into the ocean following unknown tectonic activity. Kimura also goes on to say that not only that, but he can also identify a nearby pyramid, castles, entire roads, other monuments, an entire stadium at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, yeah, this one is quite something. 
What do you guys think? Let me know. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the creation of Baalbek. Because, holy moly, if this one isn't one of the most mysterious unsolved events in history, I'm not entirely sure what is. Who the hell built Baalbek in Lebanon, the most mysterious ruins of the entire Roman Empire, a monumental, supposedly 2,000 year old temple to the god Jupiter that sits atop three separate thousand ton stone blocks? To put it into perspective, the monoliths at Stonehenge weigh about 1 40th of that. Yeah, you heard that correctly. 1000 ton stone blocks. And despite being the diligent record keepers that they were, there is no record of who ordered this temple to be built, how these monolithic stones were cut, why they were cut, or how they even came to be, and how the temple itself came to be abandoned, because for the most part, whoever built Baalbek just up and left. Now, there are many mythological and cultural legends as to the origins of Baalbek. Some say that Cain built it to hide away from the wrath of God. Others say that giants built it at the command of Nimrod, which would eventually become the Tower of Babel. In fact, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, some claim that the intergalactic landing pad alluded to in its tale was in itself Baalbek, a site constructed purely for the reception of ancient astronauts. In fact, though, the actual mystery of Baalbek resides more within its geographical location. What was the point in cutting such enormous rocks out in the middle of nowhere? Why was this temple even built where it was? And why would the Romans go to such great lengths to create a structure that wasn't efficient in location instead of next to a major city or a port? The Romans weren't exactly known for doing things without efficiency and purpose. That's what made them so successful, after all. In fact, Baalbek seems so out of character to have been built by the Romans that many scholars completely eschew any historical engineering correlation with them and simply state that the Romans never built Baalbek but discovered it and then added their iconic pillars to Jupiter and repurposed the ruins as their own kind of temple. Yeah, I'm stumped guys. The construction of Baalbek, who made it, when they did, how they did it and why they did it remains to be one of the most mysterious events in history. Well there we have it, horror fans, Alice for the top five mysterious unsolved events in history, part two. What did you guys think? Do you agree, disagree, have any more to add? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. Mikey Lefebvre says, Jack, if you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life, what would it be? <sighs> Mikey, Mikey, why would you do this to me? Why? Donnie Darko, because then I guess I'd technically be caught in an eternal loop of the space-time continuum, and who knows what could happen after that, you know? Yeah, this is a really tough one. Also, I would never get driven insane by its soundtrack because, as we all know, the soundtrack to Donnie Darko is perfect. All right, guys, on that existential note, that's unfortunately what we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.